Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Orristown, Pennsylvania on this sixth Sunday of Easter. I am Pastor Bill DeHass, Interim Pastor of the Congregation, and this video is a shorter version of our in-person worship on May 22nd, 2022. I'm glad you're here today. May you be blessed as you worship during this Easter season. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word that, empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world you have made. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus answered Judas, not Iscariot. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You have formed us for yourself, O God, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Sounds like that could have been written last week. Our hearts are restless until they rest in you. However, those words were written over 1,700 years ago by Augustine of Hippo, one of the most influential theologians in church history. In the time since, technology has improved, so has communication, transportation, the sciences, the arts, and knowledge. We've been to the top of the highest mountain and the bottom of the deepest ocean. We have put people on the moon. We have conquered diseases. Funny, none of them have changed the human heart, the human condition. For all our progress over thousands of years, human beings have not changed, not fundamentally. We are restless. Even if we have the latest gadgets, read the latest books on any subjects, or have been all over the world, we are still the same people. When I served a congregation in Lancaster County some years ago, the church building was about a quarter mile from a Turkey Hill mini market. I used to go there often for a cup of coffee in the middle of the morning. There was this guy in there almost every day who, in my opinion, was a miserable human being. Almost every time I was in there, he was buying lottery tickets and at the same time trying to impress the young woman who worked there. I heard him say to the woman, someday I'm going to win this thing and my life is going to change. At the risk of getting in a fight right there, I did not say this, though I sure thought it. Buddy, you are an insufferable jerk, and if you win the lottery, you're only going to be an insufferable jerk with money. Nothing that ticket will get you is going to change the essence of your personhood one iota. The bottom line is that we live out of our inner reality. That is, who we are comes from the inside out and not the other way around. 
If it were the other way, then all of those other factors would have changed and improved and perhaps even perfected humanity. I think that's why the night before his death on the cross, Jesus spoke to his closest followers and friends in terms of the heart. That is why Jesus would say things like, those who love me, my father and I will come and make our home with them. That is why Jesus speaks of giving us peace, but not as the world gives, because the peace the world gives, while nice and necessary, is temporary. Jesus, I suppose, could have changed the power structure of the day and time and the economics and all those things outside and around his friends, but he chose to change them. He, he could change all the conditions around you and me, but he changes you and me instead. Jesus was going to be away from these people after that night. At least he is going to be away from them in the way that he was right then and there. No more would they have the physical presence of Jesus in their lives. It is not easy to live on in life without the physical presence of people we love. It is a pain that many of us know, especially if that person was someone that we counted on during life. I had a woman in the first congregation I served who lost her mother, and in a conversation she confided that it was difficult for her to face life in her mother's absence. I can function without my mother. She did not make decisions for me, but whenever I had a difficult decision or a troubling problem, or even when I just needed an ear, she was there. Never told me what to do, but always had some words of wisdom or life experience. Those friends and followers of Jesus were now going to face life without Jesus. And how would they fare? He was their rock, their support. Well, first, Jesus notes that he would be physically absent, but he would be with them nonetheless. Interesting, at the beginning of chapter 14, Jesus speaks some words that many of us know well. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places, and I go there to prepare a place for you. We usually hear those words at funerals because the direct connection seems to be that place beyond us that Jesus is preparing but here in these verses, Jesus says something that is just the opposite. If a person loves me, that one will keep my word. My father will love them, and we will come and make a home with them. It is one thing to talk about a place for us in God's habitat someday in the by and by. It's another to talk about God's place in our habitat right here and now. However, that really is in keeping with the whole notion of eternal life in the Gospel of John. Not something that happens in the future, but a life that takes place right here and now in our relationship with the Lord and will not be interrupted by our physical death. Second, Jesus sends the Spirit, or the paraclete. Uh, paraclete's a funny word, and it has a lot of definitions, including counselor, comforter, advocate, among others. However you understand paraclete, it is Jesus' presence to teach and support all of us. Now, we are going to talk more about that in two weeks on the day of Pentecost. For today, we will say this. You and I do not have to depend on new visions, new revelations, or new teachings for guidance in the future. Jesus' presence will continue to bring all of us and uh, his words to our life here and now so that we can continue to believe in him and to love as he first loved us. And then there is that gift of peace that he promises. It is his peace, not as the world gives, Again, since we live from the inside out, Jesus' presence will bring a wholeness and balance to our lives that we cannot find out there. That does not mean that you and I will not face trials, temptations, and very unpeaceable times and persons, but we aren't ruled by them either. The peace of Christ is not that all is calm, 
but that we can be confident and trusting and faithful even when the conditions of life have us coming unglued. This piece is not optimism. Now, optimism is a good thing, but optimism says everything will turn out for the best. Peace, on the other hand, says Christ is present and will not abandon us. That may not be the peace we desire, but it is the peace that our Lord gives us, so that above all, our restless hearts can find rest in Jesus. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. Give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. Give safe haven to those who, are, who seek healing, liberation, or peace, especially to the victims of the murders in Buffalo and their families and loved ones and the community. For Ukraine, as they seek to be free from invasion and war, and to all those we name before you now in our hearts. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Accompany your will through their efforts. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died when we meet together at your river of life. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let us pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Christ is with you.